And the Lord said to Gideon, The people who are with you are too many for me to hand Midian over to them. Otherwise, Israel would become boastful, saying, My own power has saved me. Now therefore come, proclaim in the hearing of the people, saying, Whoever is afraid and worried is to return and leave Mount Gilead. So 22,000 from the people returned, but 10,000 remained. Judges, chapter 7, verses 2 and 3. All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, welcome to a brand new Legion of Michael. This is episode 6-9, no giggling, Gideon and his 300 warriors. Yes, indeed. Welcome to Legion of Michael, one and all. And thank you for all that you do to support the show. Thank you for sharing it with other people. Uh, Many of you have gone through the Legion of Michael distance learning program, the Legion of Michael church security program that we put together for you. Many of you have gone through it. Uh, and thank you to everyone who has done that, who has signed up for the program uh, and become a graduate. I truly appreciate that. And if you have not, well, uh, for what are you waiting? For what are you waiting? Click the link in the show notes. Go to legionofmichael.com and see what we have to offer. And if you'd like to support the show in your own little way, then you can do that as well. You can follow a link in the show notes. Uh, All right, so here we go. We've got uh, 69 episodes now in the can. Looking forward to uh, 70 next week. Congratulations to Jack Carr and Chris Pratt for having the courage to open the Terminal List TV series with a verse from the Bible. Many of you who are listening to me probably, uh, or you may have, I don't know, but uh, when you listen to this, you're like, oh, 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 Mr. Cotter. Uh, they talked about the, the Gideon and, and the story of Gideon at the very beginning. The very beginning of what they knew was going to be a monster uh, television series. They knew it was going to be huge because the, the Terminalist book and the, uh, the following books by Jack Carr have been very well received. Uh, I, I'm sure, I think he was on the New York Times bestseller list and so forth. And so when they made... Knowing that, knowing that when they made the series for Amazon, that a lot of people were going to watch it. And so Jack Carr and Chris Pratt, who is a, an unapologetic Christian, Chris Pratt is an unapolog- unapologetic, excuse me, an unapologetic Christian in Hollywood. And uh, congratulations to them for having the guts and the courage to open what was certainly, was certain to be a huge television series with a verse from the Bible. Now we, now God knew, he knew the hearts of the Israelites. He knew, and they were back at, during the, the time of judges, they were in trouble again. They had turned away. They were worshiping Baal. They were worshiping foreign gods and God, well, he let their enemies overtake them. He let their enemies rule over them. He let foreigners take over and Gideon prayed to God. And an angel of the Lord came to Gideon and he said, Hey, I'm choosing you. You're going to lead the people. And they led him out against the forces of Midian. And he called on the houses of Israel to send him troops. And they sent him, well, they sent him a lot. They sent him 22,000 plus 10,000. So they sent him at least 32,000. And God's like, no, this is what I know. I know how Israel is. If I send them out against the Midians and they win, They'll say, Loo-hoo, look at us. Look how strong we are. We did it. Look at us. No, God wanted to teach him a lesson. He wanted to teach him that he was their God and he was their strength. That is from where the strength came. So continue on in the book of Judges, uh, chapter 7, verse 4. Then the Lord said to Gideon, the people are still too many. Bring them down to the water and I will test them there for you. So it shall be that he of whom you say, I say to you, this one shall go with you. He shall go with you. But everyone of whom I say, (laughs) of whom I say to you, 
this one shall not go with you, he shall not go. Did you guys get that? So God said, if I say this one goes with you, he goes. If I say this one shall not with you, go with you, he shall not. <laughs> I like the way sometimes Bible verses break it down into the most simplistic, do you understand? I wonder why the Lord felt the need to do that. Do you? Do you wonder why the Lord felt the need to write it down and put it in the simplest, most easy to understand terms? Maybe because the people he was dealing with were hard headed. They had this bad tendency to stray. Then the Lord said to Gideon, you shall put everyone who laps the water with his tongue as a dog laps in one group and everyone who kneels down to drink in another. And the number of those who lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, was 300 men. But all the rest of the people kneeled down to drink water. And the Lord said to Gideon, I will save you with the 300 men who lapped and will hand the Midianites, who numbered in the tens of thousands, over to you. So have all the people go, each man to his home. So the 300 men took the people's provisions and their trumpets in their hands, and Gideon dismissed all the other men of Israel, each to his tent, but but retained the 300, and the camp of Midian was below him in the valley. Now, I don't need to read the rest of the story to you. Now, one of the nice things that uh, when you read this, and I've read this, I probably read this in, in Sunday school, 40 years ago or 45 years ago or however long ago it's been uh, when I read about Gideon and the trumpet. Everybody knows about the story of Gideon and his trumpets, right? He, they blew the trumpets and they they frightened the Midianites and the Midianites were so afraid that they, they sprung up in the night and they were fighting each other. They were so afraid. They were confused and so on and so forth. Uh, the trumpet of Gideon. Everybody knows about the trumpet of Gideon. And I remember the story about the guys. Uh, and But what's funny is when you, you think about it, you say, well, if they lapped like a dog, then didn't they just lay down on the ground, stick their face in the river, and, and suck water out? Like, actually, no. What the men who la- that says from their hands, so the 300 actually bent down or squatted down or whatever, reached down into the river, brought the water up to their mouths, and the rest just got down on their hands and knees and stuck their face in the river and drank like that. So now in the, uh, what's interesting is in the beginning of the terminal list, they expound upon it about how God gave Gideon, the men who had the forethought to squat or kneel down, but keep their head up and look around and pay attention to what was going around them as opposed to the ones that just flopped down on the ground, stuck their face in the river, and started drinking water out. Now, the 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 reason that they use that in the terminal list uh, is to talk about the fact that you don't need great numbers. What you need is dedicated men. Dedicated, hard men are more valuable than the masses, than great numbers. Now, in the, the book of Judges, the obviously the lesson that God was trying to teach was that he was their salvation, that they needed to put their courage in him, not worry about the numbers. The Midians, the Midianites, the Midianites, they outnumbered the Israelites, probably, I don't know, 10 to 1, 50 to 1, 20 to 1. And the Israelites were able to defeat them and rout them. And if you continue reading the book of Judges, there were some Midianite kings who got their heads cut off and brought back on the end of you know spears and uh, swords and so forth. Um, was not good for the Midianites when the Lord showed his favor to Israel, showed his favor to the Jews and to Gideon. The reason I bring this up is because many of you uh, have expressed a little bit of frustration or you've reached out and you said, How can we, as the children of God, how can we, as God's warriors, as God's soldiers, how can we win when it seems like everywhere we look, the forces of Satan, the forces of evil outnumber us? 
I mean, you look in the government, you look in the media, you look at Hollywood, you look all around you, you look at the weak, spineless people in your country, in your community that are still to this day covering their faces with masks. What is going on in your brain? Those are broken people. So we look around and we think, man, we're in the minority. That's okay. Whoever told you that you had to, in God's eyes, that you had to be part of the majority of men in order to succeed, in order to be saved, in order to, to be victorious? Who told you that in order to be victorious, you had to have the greater numbers? Masses are just masses. In the book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 27, and also in the book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 26, uh, looking upon them, Jesus said, with men it is impossible, but not with God, for all things are possible with God. All things. 300 men can defeat 1,000 men or 10,000 men. Or 20,000. You say, well, how many? <laughs> Remember when, uh, when was it uh, Abraham uh, when he was looking down? <laughs> when Abraham was looking down at Sodom and Gomorrah from the hilltop, and he said, he said, but Lord, if there are 50 righteous men, will you spare it? And the Lord said, yes, I will, if there are 50 righteous men. And he's like, well, what if there's 40? He's like, okay, well, there's 40. Well, what if there's 30? And he's like, all right, Abraham, if there's 30, I'll spare it. Well, 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 well what, if there's, what if there's 10? And God's like, roll. And I don't know if God rolls his eyes or not, but he's like, okay, if there are 10 righteous men in Sodom, I will spare it. And, well, what do we know? There weren't. There weren't. Uh, and even Lot's son-in-laws turned away, and his wife even turned away. So when we say, "Well, three hundred, you know, with all things God, or with with God, all things are possible," so three hundred can defeat defeat a thousand. What about two thousand? Yes. If you were to ask God, if you were to sit before God and say, "Well," he and he says, "Well, with your three hundred, you can defeat a thousand." You're like, okay. But what if there's 2,000? He's yes, in 2,000. Well, what if there's 10,000? Yes, 10,000. Well, whoa, whoa, whoa. what if there's 100,000? Yes, the answer is always yes. With God, all things are possible. There are no limitations. Limitations are for men. Limitations are what we put on ourselves. Limitations are what we put on each other. As mortal men, we come to accept and embrace uh, uh, limitations. Sometimes we embrace limitations because we want to use that as an excuse not to excel, not to achieve, not to do what we need to do. I'm just a man. I'm just a this. I'm just a whatever. We put limitations on ourselves. That's what men do. And Christ knew that. And he said to his disciples, hey, listen up, hippies. <laughs> okay, I don't think Christ said and up hippies oh but it wouldn't it be wonderful if he did wouldn't it be wonderful if, if just one time he sat down and he said listen up hippies stop arguing amongst yourselves with men it is impossible because with men we as men put limitations on ourselves we allow other men to put limitations on us but as a child of God, if you are a true follower of God, nothing is impossible because for all things are possible with God. Do we remember that? That is the lesson of Gideon and his 300. They had thousands and God's like, you know what? I'm, gonna, I'm going to make a point here. I need to make a point because I know what I'm dealing with. I know I'm dealing with men. And I know men like to take credit for their own successes and not give it to me. You remember, this was before the kings, when God gave Israel judges. Why didn't God want to give them a king? 
He didn't want to give them a king because he knew as soon as he gave them an earthly king, as soon as he gave them a man to rule over him, that they would look to the man and stop looking to him. And that's exactly what has happened. Instead of looking to Christ our Savior and looking to God our Father, what do we do? We look to whoever it is our party runs for president. And we search for that person as a savior. We expect that person to be our savior. When they're never, they never were intended to be our savior. In the United States of America, the president is not supposed to be your savior. Jesus Christ is supposed to be your savior. Because when you look to a man, what do men have? Men have limitations. With men, things are impossible. But with God, when you look to your heavenly Father as your ruler, when you go to him first and men second, as opposed to the other way around, and that's a lot of people are living in this world. That is the other, that's what they do. They look to men first, and then when men fail them, then they begrudgingly, they're like, well, maybe I should go ask that God guy. Maybe I should go, maybe I should go ask him. Instead of turning to their heavenly father first, they turn to him as a last resort. That's not what he wants. That's not how you were designed. Stop worrying that you're not in the majority. That is a limitation that you put on yourself. You, as a child of God, as one of God's soldiers, as one of God's warriors, you don't need to be in the majority. That's why God, we talk about this, God loves liberty. God loves the representative republic. God does not like democracy. Democracy is what killed Christ. Christ was killed by democracy. What? Yes. Pontius Pilate was going to let him go, but the majority of the mob screamed for his blood that's democracy that's majority rule if we can get a bunch of of mongoloids if we can get 51 percent of the mongoloids to vote a certain way well then that's what we have to do that is not a republic that is not liberty that is not freedom democracy is none of those democracy is mob rule democracy is what killed jesus christ Ladies and gentlemen, the lesson of Gideon and his 300 warriors. If you look around and you feel overwhelmed and you feel like you're in the majority or the minority, you feel like you're in the minority, you feel like maybe nobody else feels like you do. First of all, that's not the case. There are others who feel like you do. There are others who have faith. There are others who look to God, their father, first, not last, not second, not as a last resort. They understand that with men, things are impossible because men put limitations on each other. Men want to put limitations on you, but God does not want to put limitations on you. God wants everything for you. He wants the best for you. For all things are possible with God. Don't worry that you might be in the minority. Don't worry that it seems like the minions of Satan, Satan and his disciples are everywhere we turn our heads. That's fine. Because our 300, our 3,000, our 30,000 will defeat and destroy the minions of Satan because we don't rely on ourselves. We're not relying on ourselves. That is the beauty of that is we don't have to rely on ourselves because God is our strength. And when God is for us, who can be against us? The answer is no one. The answer is no one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to close out with the warrior's prayer. Lord, I come before you seeking the strength and skill to overcome my enemies. Grant me, I pray, the wisdom to recognize evil the courage to confront it, and the strength to destroy it. In Jesus' name I pray this. Amen.